Hello everyone, a funny thing happened on the way home from Albania, which gave me reason to make this film. It's something I've been thinking about for quite a while. Historically, when I did documentary projects, I always carried two bodies and two lenses. Most of the time in my career, that meant a Leica rangefinder, an M4 and an M6 with a 35 F2 and a 50 F2. Pretty basic stuff. These days, however, I shoot Fuji. I still have two bodies, but I now have four lenses, two of which I rarely ever use. They're basically for specific uh, lens-specific projects that I run into from time to time. My trip to Albania was specifically about photography. I knew that I'd be shooting every day, all day long. So my second body, which I'm using to record this film, I loaned to my wife, along with the 35 millimeter or 23 millimeter in Fuji speak. I knew once I loaned it to her, I would never get it back, which meant that I was down to one camera body and two lenses. Now, the second lens I never took out of my backpack over a two week period. I did the entire trip. Every single photograph I made, I did with this, which is a 50 millimeter weather sealed F2. It's very small, it's very light, it's very unobtrusive. This is what I wanna talk about today. I bought my first 50 millimeter in 1993 and I had absolutely no idea how to use it. I was a uh, full-time photographer. I was shooting for a major daily newspaper. I had a degree in photojournalism and I literally had absolutely no idea how to be a photographer. That's pretty par for the course. At the time, there was a huge shift happening in photography, especially in the equipment arena, with Canon ushering in autofocus and also the fixed 2.8 zoom lenses. So lenses like the 20 to 35 and the 70 to 200 28, those had become the absolute norm staple for every newspaper photographer I knew for the most part. There were some rare birds out there shooting Leica, shooting fixed lenses, but for the most part, everybody had transitioned to zooms, including me. However, for some unknown reason, I bought a Canon 50 millimeter 1.4, which was a complete piece of garbage. Within a matter of weeks, I could take the lens and I could shake it and it would go clack, 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 clack because the elements inside were coming apart. It was garbage. But more importantly is I didn't know how to use it. I didn't know how to frame with it. I didn't know how to use the aperture on a 50. And the other thing you have to realize is when you do photography long enough, you have this ability, you gain the ability to anticipate images that will happen based on the environment that you're in. And you have to be in sync. You have to be in tune. I didn't know how to use the 50, so I sold it. A couple months goes by, for whatever reason, I bought a second one and I sold it. And then a couple of months went by or maybe a year goes by, I bought a third one and I sold it. I never committed to the 50 and I didn't know how to use it until I bought a Leica M6 and a 50 millimeter F2. And I don't remember how I got it or why I got it, but I started to commit to that combination and I would leave everything else at home and I would only use that camera and lens combo. And I have to say that changed my life. It probably is the most significant gear decision I've made in my entire life. And it translates onto today. So the entire time in Albania, I never once had to think about my equipment. I never once had to think about lens choice. So there's three reasons, and I conveniently wrote them down. Three reasons why I think this is so important. And the number one thing, which is, these are not in any kind of hierarchical order, but the number one thing is you don't, when you're carrying a single body and a single lens, you don't look like a photographer. And the days of being a photographer and having that work to your benefit are numbered. You know, it's harder and harder to do documentary work these days. People are suspicious. They see a professional level camera and they say, okay, you get away. Meanwhile, the 50 people next to them who are recording in 4k on their iPhones, those people are okay. But cameras for whatever reason now uh, signify people get nervous. So this happened in a museum where we came, I walked in with a camera and they said, oh no, no, you can't use that in here. Well, there was literally a guy streaming himself live on his iPhone the entire time I was in the museum. So it makes no sense. So number one, single body, single camera, makes you look a little bit less uh, like a photographer. Number two, and maybe the most important part is that using a single lens for the entire time provides consistency to the look of the work that you're creating. I don't shoot single images, I shoot stories. So there needs to be a cohesiveness to those stories. And when you're shooting the same lens the entire time, it's very easy to get that consistency. And secondly, that translates over to the design. So when I'm creating my publication from the trip, which is critical to me, I would never, ever, ever go on a trip and spend that much time making pictures and not put it into a publication. If you're a photographer who 
leaves everything in the digital space, in my opinion, you are dropping the ball on the last third of your career. If you're not going to print, you're not coming full circle with the projects that you're doing. Print requires a very specific kind of commitment. It requires editing skills, sequencing skills, designing skills, etc. So not only am I going to do stuff into a magazine, I'm doing it in real time while I'm still in the country. Every day, at the end of the day, I'm editing, sequencing, and laying out the publication that I'm gonna make so that when I get home, all I've gotta do is hit print and I'm done. And a week later, it shows up on my doorstep and I can start diving in. So using the same lens all the time provides the consistency of the look that I'm after. And the third point is when you only have one lens, you spend all your time shooting and none of your time fumbling. And I bring this up because I've taught workshops, many workshops over the years. And I can't tell you how many students I've had, I've looked over at them in the field and they've got multiple cameras and multiple lenses on those cameras and fanny packs and backpacks and they spend 40% of their time, 50% of their time fumbling with their gear. And it's like what lens and what camera and what combination and what card and I need a speed light and I need multiple speed lights and I need strobes and all this stuff and all the while the world is moving in front of you and you're missing it. So if you ever have a question about whether you need a piece of equipment in the field, you've already answered it. You don't need it. So my recommendation to you is to choose a lens and a single body and a giant stack of batteries and go out in the field until those batteries are dead.